PewDiePie, also known as Felix Kelberg, is one of the most popular YouTube personalities of all time. With over 111 million subscribers and billions of views, he has become a household name and a symbol of YouTube success. But how did he get to where he is today? What were the key moments in his life and career that shaped him into the legend he is today? We will take a deep dive into the life of PewDiePie and explore the events and experiences that made him who he is. Early Life Our story begins Gothenburg, Sweden, is a fairly large city on the western coast of the country. More than half a million people live there, and it is an important seaport for the country and the headquarters for Volvo cars. It's also the birthplace of Felix Arvid Ulf Kjellberg, known to the world as PewDiePie. He was born on October 24, 1989, in Gothenburg, Sweden. But how did it all start? Well, it all began when a 19-year-old Felix decided to start his YouTube channel in 2010 with a dream and a passion for gaming. But it wasn't until he launched his first YouTube channel in 2006 that he began using the internet seriously. He gave it the punny name PewDie because that's the fall monopia for the noise made by a laser. Call of Duty Modern Warfare's release in 2007 marked a watershed moment in the culture of video game commentary and self-recording. Felix was greatly motivated to emulate both of them so that he could enjoy releasing his own Call of Duty commentary videos and achieve the same level of success that they had. As a whole, he was drawn to this site due to his interest in creative and social expression. Felix was already a Photoshop pro since his school time, but after having his attention pulled to YouTube by those YouTubers whom he admired, he found that this platform sparked his interest even more with a rising urge for expression. Felix later revealed that he was too shy to talk in his first video, which he recorded while actively creating his own content for a period of time. He seemed to still be battling with his anxiety. Despite this, he continued to fight. He became enamored with the platform and the comments he received, which enabled him to feel at ease enough to eventually open himself. On the other hand, his early stint on YouTube did not result in a great deal of success for him. It didn't seem like there was any obvious way to progress beyond the level of a basic hobby, especially considering that he was also actively pursuing his studies. The struggling phase. As 2007 turned into 2008 and then 2009, nothing changed. And he didn't get much feedback or interaction from viewers. His interest in the show started to fade. He never had more than a few people watch any of the videos he uploaded, and he never built a loyal following with less than 50 subscribers. At one point, he tried to sell his content to Machinima in the hopes that the site would like his videos and give him a way to reach a larger audience, but it didn't work. As time went on, he posted less and less. By 2009, he hadn't posted in so long that he forgot his password. Even so, he still loved the platform, and despite everything, he seemed to believe deep down that he could succeed if he kept going. Let's be a YouTuber. In 2010, Felix figured out the old channel's password at which point he deleted all of his previous uploads and started a new channel under the name PewDiePie. Because Felix's college career had begun to burden him with a variety of small problems, like being disinterested in the subject materials and not feeling like he fit in among his peers, he may have returned to content because of his ever-increasing desire to express himself, which had resumed upon quitting the first time. During school, he was not receiving financial support from his parents so Felix redoubled his efforts to build an audience by regularly uploading Let's Plays videos and working at a harbor and also selling a hot dog stand in his hometown. At beginning, YouTubers often have a difficult time. Since they are trying to figure out how to attract a consistent audience rather than relying on casual viewers, you need to have that initial sub-base to grow because the small but loyal audience tells you that you have some market potential. On the evening of December 16, 2010, he was promoted by a little larger gaming channel, increasing his subscriber count from 30 to 100. The start of a new year always inspires renewed vigor and high hopes for the future. To get things going, he'd have to release enough videos to sustainably interest people and expand his channel's viewership. Gaining popularity. As PewDiePie continued to create videos, his subscriber count grew rapidly. By the end of 2012, he had over 1 million subscribers on YouTube, and his channel was becoming one of the most popular gaming channels on the platform.
PewDiePie's popularity skyrocketed in 2012 when he began posting videos of himself playing the horror game Amnesia The Dark Descent. His humorous commentary and reactions to the game's scary moments quickly gained him a massive following. PewDiePie's popularity continued to grow, and by 2013, he had over 5 million subscribers on his channel. In 2014, PewDiePie signed a multi-year contract with Maker Studios, a subsidiary of the Walt Disney Company. This partnership allowed him to expand his brand and produce content beyond YouTube. He released a mobile game called PewDiePie Legend of the Brofist in 2015, which was a commercial success. PewDiePie Net Worth 2023 PewDiePie, also known as Felix Kelberg, is one of the most successful YouTubers in the world with an estimated net worth of $50 million as of 2023. The majority of his income comes from his YouTube channel, where he earns money through advertising revenue and brand deals. Advertising Revenue PewDiePie's YouTube channel has over 111 million subscribers, and his videos have been viewed over 27 billion times. This massive viewership has allowed him to earn a significant amount of money through advertising revenue. YouTube pays content creators a percentage of the advertising revenue generated from their videos, and PewDiePie's channel generates a substantial amount of ad revenue due to its large audience. According to estimates from Social Blade, PewDiePie's channel generates between $9.1,000 to $144.9,000 per month in advertising revenue, depending on factors such as the number of views and engagement. This means that he could be earning up to $10 million per year from ad revenue alone. In 2019, PewDiePie signed a multi-year deal with the live streaming platform DLive, which reportedly included a $20 million partnership. He has also worked with brands such as LG, Razer, and G Fuel, among others. While it's unclear exactly how much PewDiePie earns from brand deals, it's safe to say that it's a significant source of income for him. According to a report from Business Insider, some YouTubers with similar followings have earned up to $250,000 for a single brand deal. PewDiePie's income also comes from other sources, such as his mobile game, PewDiePie, Legend of the Brofist, and his book, This Book Loves You. He also earns money through his Patreon account, where fans can support him directly by making monthly donations. And there you have it, the incredible history of PewDiePie. From a young gamer in Sweden to the king of YouTube, PewDiePie's journey is nothing short of extraordinary. His story teaches us that with dedication, authenticity, and resilience, you can achieve greatness. If you enjoyed this journey through the history of PewDiePie, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel, and hit that notification bell so you never miss out on our exciting content. And of course, share your favorite PewDiePie moments and memories in the comments below.